Well, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, join this webinar. And especially, I want to greet my Indonesian colleague, Yuda. Thank you very much for the presentations, because actually it gives additional background to my presentation. <laughs> That's great. OK, I'll start. Um, this is actually uh, the map of West Kalimantan in 2010. Uh, this is actually the plantations uh, map. I just uh, want to show you uh, briefly about this. And this is the information. So West Kalimantan's total area is more than 14 million hectares uh, with 4.2 million populations. But we have 300 uh, 26 palm oil companies so with concessions over 4.8 million hectares. And we have mining permits for 651 mining companies covering 1.5 million hectares. Forest timber products utilization business license given to 151 companies covering 3.7 million hectares. So we have actually 1.8 1,128 companies control 10 million hectares of land and forest, um, around 70% of total area of West Kalimantan. So it's left 30% only, or 4.4 million hectares area for 4.3 million people in West Kalimantan. This, and this is not included yet, 3.7 million hectares for uh, conservation and protected areas. So there's actually nothing for people, especially indigenous peoples. There's another uh, example, a brief one. So this is actually the uh, indigenous territories of Lusan in Pasir East Kalimantan, uh, more than 53,000 uh, hectares of area. And then um, this is protected areas. Uh, more than 20, 21,000 uh, hectares. And then also this one, it's logging concession. Uh, you see the information there. And then this one is land use right. This is a plantation as well. And then this one is mining concession. So, the only remaining areas for indigenous people in the displaced indigenous people's territories is 409 uh, hectares. So it leaves nothing for indigenous peoples in this area. Um, so this actually not happened only in East Kalimantan, but also in many different places in Indonesia. Uh, Yuda gives some background about uh, how the investment came to Indonesia and encroaching all of our territories. So in 1999, uh, indigenous peoples from different places in Indonesia came together. And that was our first Congress of Aman. And they make a strong statement at that time. Uh, they said that if the state does not recognize us, we will not recognize the state. So that become a very uh, strong um, statement in 1999. Uh, this is actually the member of Aman, uh, February 2013. Now we have some additional uh, uh, members come, come in. I um, just want to show you this briefly. Um, so for a long time, for years, actually we don't really have legal recognition in Indonesia. And how, how then the indigenous people survive? Uh, we have uh, some examples of how uh, customary law uh, play uh, big roles uh, for indigenous peoples to prevent themselves uh, from, from destructions of their territories. And during Sukarno era, actually, customary law recognized as one of the law that we can use in Indonesia. Um, so this is actually just some examples, just quick examples of how how the customary law has been used. For example, by the Ibanik in Sungai Uti, they penalized the Ministry of uh, the Minister of Forestry, MS Kaban, uh, and it was it was accepted by the minister, and he agreed to pay the fine. And also uh, Daya Limbai against the uh, coal mining company, and also Daya Bunyau in the uh, 
indigenous communities uh, against logging company. Um, so it was it was uh, quite effective, but not really that powerful to protect indigenous people's uh, rights in Indonesia. So we, after Aman was established together with the, our, our members and also non-members, indigenous people's non-members, and with our uh, allies, uh, organization, NGOs in Indonesia, we fight for different, uh, the, to change different laws in Indonesia. So at first, actually, we have Regional Autonomy Act, 1999. It was not specifically, uh, it doesn't have a specific provision about indigenous peoples, but it gave, uh, it gave opportunity for village autonomy, actually, and it, ha it has impact for, for indigenous peoples. And also, we have National Assembly Decree, actually, in 2001, that recognized indigenous peoples' rights on land, territories, and nat natural resources. Um, there's also amendment to the constitutions of the of RI. Uh, paragraph 18b, Article 2, it clearly said that the state recognize and respect the units of indigenous communities along with the traditional knowledge, etc., etc. So, actually, we do have like a basic law that, uh, uh, and also our constitution that recognize indigenous people's rights. But however, the operations, because of all this investment came to Indonesia, and su support from also military and police brigade, it keep um, encroaching our land, and it led to human rights viola violation in different regions. But however, we well during the, this period, 1999-2003, uh, what happened was all confrontation, confrontations, uh, a lot of confrontations. But in 2003 to 2007, actually, we tried to how to engage with the government, uh, how to bridge gaps, and so we start doing more dialogues with government. So then, after 2007-2018, uh, there are actually greater policy changes, corporations, program developments with uh, between indigenous peoples and governments. We have actually Act Number uh, 27, 2007, on small islands and coastal areas. It recognizes indigenous peoples' ownership on territory. Also, it recognizes uh, free prior informed consent. And also, we have Act Number 32, 2009, on the management and protection of environment. Uh, it recognizes indigenous peoples' rights and their traditional knowledge, especially related to uh, the management of environment. We have national legislation program in 2010-2014 actually uh, gave us a greater opportunity or opportunities to uh, to push for more um, promising um, law. Uh, so we actually in 2011 uh, we tried to provide uh, academic paper of uh, draft act on recognition and protection of indigenous people's rights. So we submitted that to the parliament, and uh, the parliament uh, accepted that. And then uh, they work on this draft and make it their draft. So now, actually, until uh, this year, uh, it's still in the parliament. It's, the, 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 it's a bit slow. Yeah? The process is a bit slow, because now, after the parliament finished talking about, uh, discussing about this, they invite the, the executive, uh, the, uh, the president, and um, the ministries to talk about this. So now, actually, it's in the hand, in the hand of uh, four ministries who are working on this: Ministry of Forestry, Ministry of uh, Foreign, uh, Ministry of uh, uh, apa, uh, Law and Human Rights, uh, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, and Ministry of Home Affairs. Uh, we do hope that this year uh, they will can they can already adopt this uh, this law. Uh, it's a big thing. I think that is this is the biggest thing that we uh, for indigenous peoples in Indonesia. If we can have uh, a, like an umbrella law that protect our rights. Um, in the national legislation program 2010-2018, uh, 14, we also have another chance 
to revise the National Forestry Act uh, number 41, 1999. But however, uh, the process in the parliament was very, very slow. Even until now, they did not come with anything new uh, with the plan to, to, to revise. So based on that situation, we decided that we have to do, uh, we have to go to constitutional court to start uh, changing this, this law. So then we submit, we make an appeal to constitutional court um, because there are, there, there is a very uh, important provisions in the law uh, about indigenous people's rights. The, the, the forestry law saying that uh, customary law is state forest, a uh, customary forest is state forest. Well, that is a big uh, thing for indigenous peoples because based on this law, uh, the, the state can, can do anything in the in, in indigenous territories. They can they can give it a uh, concession uh, to the to the uh, uh, private sectors, etc. So this is actually the the basic law that have a strong impact to the to the encroachment of our territories. So we decided that okay, we have to do this uh, to change this law through the constitutional court. So, okay, I start with this. Actually, this is uh, the appeal. The forestry law says, if you see in the screen, uh, the state forest is customary forest. Uh, it's part of uh, state forest. I mean, Indonesia, uh, the customary law categorizes forest into two categories, state forest and forest rights. Um, customary forest is part of state forest. So our appeal to the constitutional court is to change that to divide uh, this, uh, the forest in Indonesia into three categories, state forest, forest rights, and customary forest. But the constitutional court came out with another result, uh, still two categories, state forest and forest rights, but the customary forest is now part of the forest rights. Um, basically, the constitutional court saying that um, customary forest is forest within indigenous territories, so it's no longer state forest. So it's acknowledging that the this, this constitutional court ruling actually very interesting, very strong, because at first they're acknowledging that the state has ignored the land rights of indigenous peoples in forest areas for claiming the customary forest as state forest. That is very that there is a strong statement in the in the uh, the, the ruling, and then. The rights of the state to control shall not override the inherent rights of indigenous peoples to control their land, uh, land ter uh, territories, and resources. So the most important things for indigenous peoples now in Indonesia is that the, the ruling says that customary forests are not state forests, but falls within the category of private collective ownership of indigenous communities. So customary forests are forests located within indigenous territories. And authority of state is limited to ensure forest function and distribution of forest resources. That's all. And another thing that interesting from this ruling is that the, the constitutional court also recognized free prior informed consent. They uh, refer, they use reference from some uh, international instruments uh, re in the, uh, related to indigenous people's rights. And also, one very political thing that they're, they're saying he, in this ruling is that indigenous peoples in Indonesia are a masyarakat hukum adat. They don't say it like, like that, but by taking reference from international instrument on indigenous peoples to say, uh, uh, to mention about indigenous peoples' problem in Indonesia, it means that they recognize. The problem was we had before is that our government until now, in international uh, level, they keep saying that uh, indigenous peoples is different with masyarakat hukum adat. Uh, there is no indigenous peoples in Indonesia. That's what the government always uh, uh, saying in international. 
So this ruling actually also gives us very um, uh, a political, uh, how do you say, a statement for indigenous peoples in Indonesia. So now we can say that we are indigenous people. There are indigenous peoples in Indonesia. So um, this uh, ruling actually gives a chance for millions of indigenous peoples in Indonesia to release our uh, territories from the hand of the state. Uh, now we are doing a uh, mapping in uh, many the apa, in different parts, different region in Indonesia. And if you see, I just uh, uh, type a link in the chat. You can open that. Just two days ago, we launched an uh, indicative map of indigenous territories in Indonesia. You can see in that link. Um, we, why we are doing this mapping? Uh, because we, uh, many times we he heard any people in Indonesia, especially government, asking, where is indigenous peoples? Where are they located? Where they are located? And then by doing this ma uh, participatory mapping, we can provide information for the government. Uh, this is our land, this is our territory, here are the indigenous peoples. So they cannot ignore us anymore. And now actually we already uh, map almost 6 million hectares of indigenous territories. So it, it's stated in the, in the, if you see the, the map that I just uh, put in the link, you can see that the information there. However, um, although we won the case in the, in the constitutional court, we also had challenges in the implementation of the ruling. First, because it required uh, government regulations on the rights of indigenous peoples of a customary forest. It also required government regulations to ensure the recognition of indigenous peoples by district governments. So in fact, that actually the district government had to say, had to make a statement, had to recognize that, okay, here is the indigenous peoples here in, our, in, in this territory before we can have the customary forest recognized. So this is the, the challenges for us now. And, but we are doing what, uh, the best we can now. We are working with the, uh, some ministries, including Ministry of Environment. We are also working with the UKP4, the uh, presidential unit for the, um, um, how do you say UKP4? <laughs> I forgot what is it in English, um, but it's for monitoring of the development. Um, uh, it's very, very uh, strong unit under the president and report directly to president. So we try to work with them as well, and also we try to now we try to change the the forestry law and uh, faster the process for the recognition of indigenous peoples' rights. The bill. Um, if we do, if we already have the bill, then this problem can be, we can, we can uh, work on this problem. So this is actually basically what we are uh, doing now in Indonesia. But despite all of these uh, problems, we, this is something that we have to, um, for, for many indigenous peoples, for a lot of indigenous peoples in Indonesia, this is, this uh, constitutional court ruling really means something. And there is a lot of there are a lot of movement now in Indonesia where indigenous people start claiming their territories by putting signposts in their territories, saying that based on the customary uh, constitutional court ruling, this is our territory, not state forest, something like that. So actually, it's created a big movement and it's become a, a big issue now in Indonesia. Everybody talking about this, and also uh, the government start to pay attention. So. That's actually I want to share with you guys. Thank you very much.